Then I was washing clothes this morning, so I was running the generator. And when I'm doing that, I kind of like to get other things done. You know, as long as I got the power going. So I was probably tiring a bunch of stuff. But it's uh, just about sundown, so I gotta get these tucked away or they'll be full of insects. So I put a pretty heavy coat on. And tomorrow I'll wipe them down with turpentine. Let them soak a little more and then burn it in. But it's just assorted stuff that, uh, you know, the hammers and hatchet handles, these are all bowmen, but they come with a varnish on them. So I was sanding all that varnish off. But it works good, you know, when you get a good hot sunny day, that stuff cooks in. But still, I like to hit them with a torch to get the last bit of her. <laughs> There's a few bugs on here, but it'll give a little better grip. But if I left about too long, then the gnats start coming. But I got a couple of them that I put those those octagon handles on because I really like them. I, I like the way they feel. And I think they're both plum hammers. And then this one is also plum, but it's of the smaller size. You know, uh, much lighter than what like this one is. You know, it's a whole it's like your this would be a great one for a kid. You know, because kids got to have it. Well, and women tend to do it too with a with a hammer. They end up they choke up like this. They're trying to use it. Well, give them a light enough hammer, and they can learn to use it right. Get the whole swing on it. Oh, I was going to say too that one. This one is the one that I had found laying down by the bridge along the highway where it had fallen off of something and a snow plow had hit it and completely shattered the handle. But very good hammer and it's actually American made hammer. So I think it probably was, you know, a pretty expensive hammer in the first place. But that's a handy sized hammer too for serious pounding. But I found the right handle to fit that. And this little ball peen, I can't remember, I just picked that up not that long ago. I don't remember where I got that. But I had a handle for it. And I got a couple of them little hatchets. And this is that big five pound Collins. Which I think, you know, I, I usually split wood with a mall. But I sometimes split with an axe, and, and some of them true temper ones work very well. They have a true temper perfect. It is an excellent wood splitter. Something to do with the shape of the head. But you've got a lot of momentum with a five pounder. You know, because my mauls are usually five pounds. So I don't know, I'll maybe give this a try. Right, just splitting firewood. But with a nice straight handle on it. Now these other two, well, okay, this is a Collins, fairly light head, but what I did with this is I slimmed the handle down. So I took the regular axe handle and slimmed it way down, well you can kind of compare it to what the regular handle the thickness, yeah, maybe not so obvious, but what it does it flattened the sides out. I kind of like that. I grew used to that with uh, the new Colin splitting malls that come out of Mexico. I've got these flattened handles and until I got that Husqvarna splitting mall, that's what I used all the time. And I like them because you always have a really good 
control and a good idea of, of the angle that you're hitting something at. You know, just having the flat sides. That's not particularly what I needed, which is why I got a little inventive with that handle. Now this one is a little different. It's a Seder Banco, old Swedish. Now it's a two pound head, which is light. So there again, I took a regular handle. In this case, to show you. It was one of these which are called an axe eye splitting ball handle. Well, what I ended up doing, I cut this whole part off here and used the meaty part here, and then I actually thinned this one down too to make a light, very light with a diesel length handle. What I wanted this for, or my plan, is when I'm cutting wood, you know, you, you cut a tree down, and then you cut it into lengths, you start loading it, and you always find branches or, or odd pieces that were like on the downside, they got jammed into the ground, and you got to trim them off, and you can't pile this stuff decently. So you always have to have an axe along, but I thought this would be a good one for that, for limbing like that. You know, it's, it's just, you got to have a sharp edge on them, but it's light. I like that. Uh, you know, I, I said before, uh, years ago, I used to use a, well, it was a Sandvik, and that's how I first got into the Swedish axes. I had bought that, had no idea what I was buying, and in using it, the, the regular short handle, you know, it came with a, a regular handle like, like any of these come with, you know, that little short thing. Well, that broke, and the head was almost like this, almost identical to this, though this is a Stanley. Well, I took that sand rig and I put a, a cut down handle from a double bit axe. I shortened it up to be about that long. I found that to be the handiest thing, especially on the trap line. It was easy to carry on the dog sled. It just worked out very well. And I kind of missed that one. I, I'm not sure that got mislaid someplace. But I know, you know, like I say, that got me into the Swedish axes, and that's where I kept using that thing. And then the one day I figured, I got to figure out why this one works so well. Well, and I got to looking at it, and it said that Sandvik on it, and then I looked it up, and yeah, it was from Sweden. Because it just outperformed all the other hatchets that I had, you know, it just worked very well. Enough to notice, you know. Well, I did a couple of pitchforks, too, that I put the new handles on. But, like I say, I keep the bugs off from tonight, and then tomorrow I'll wipe them down with the turpentine to get the pine tar loosened up again and get it moving. Let them sit in the sun for a while, then I'll hit them with fire. And that's it, bring them. You get them hot, and then wipe them off. You know, it gets rid of the excess pine tar so you don't have the stickiness and it opens the pores and lets it suck it in. So that needs to be done tomorrow. But it's gonna to be another hot day, and heat is what matters.